opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick boss's youtube channel and press that bell icon now we've got a comment on uh, on a similar on the same lines let's take a look at it it's a comment that's coming from soham spelled s o a h a m soham uh says would have loved to see virat open with fat it could have been a fiery combo might have looked to replicate much like what the guy quad fat combo did for csk in the previous season virat not opening is there a function of not having enough batting power power in the middle uh, sami uh, bharat what do you guys think is it virat try to sort of spread it out a little bit or fast try to spread it out a little bit sir I, I actually am very happy with Virat at number three. I think uh, Joyce, uh, Joyce has just spoke about it also. Uh, one, it gives uh, Anuj Rawat an opportunity. He's a very young, talented opener. So one, it's giving him an opportunity. And two, like we spoke, the middle order is a little uh, weak right now for RCB. So it's him also stabilizing that middle order. So I feel this combination works for RCB. But yeah, uh, and uh, also you can't have Faf and Virat. batting together or opening together in faf duplessis strength in the ipl has been as an opener and why because he has those gears he'll start slowly but he always can catch up which is what virat kohli also does but you can't have both of them opening together so you need to break them up as well you need someone like a uh, anuj rawat who like already he's done he'll play a few shots and then faf can play that anchor role to the end and then virat depending on when he walks out he can adjust his game i think that's another thing and just going back on that rcb thing that joyal was talking about uh, uh i i call it the mohammed kaif curse and i'll tell you what i mean it's a very indian theory i've had so in 2011 i'll never forget this i was covering the auction in bangalore this is like when they had 10 teams for the first time late on day 2 mohammed kaif had gone unsold twice and then finally uh, his name came up a third time there was his only name who came up a third time and then the then rcb owners and a few other owners like you know they, they were like being very disrespectful the way they were like you know just lifting their uh, whatever the thing you call and like uh, keep putting it down and then there was a press conference finally mohammed kaif was bought for like just over base price and someone asked about this mohammed kaif thing and i remember vijay malia saying ah oh, that's just us having fun like, you know and they are talking about someone who you know gave his life for indian cricket mohammed kaif and yeah. they were so like uh, dismissive of him they they were so uh, vijay malia in particular was so uh, you know disrespectful towards him like yeah, i i thought that day yaar yeah, like you know somewhere it'll come to bite rcb and i mean it's just my theory i think i call it the mohammed kaif curse so yeah, i I'll, i'll add to that because I, we were sitting on the table and the one of the things was you remember that year was the year that you had indian players you could buy non international indian players you bought at 50000 dollars and 20000 dollars as in those slot thing and mohammed kaif they were having fun with uh, uh, in those days i think it was pune warriors pune warriors had bid for them and suddenly these guys thought they were having a fun and they bought mohammed kaif and i remember anil kumble's face going ashen because a 100000 dollars that he had reserved for domestic players wo nikal gaya uska jo pura plan itna banaya tha wo bhi khatam ho gaya so he cost them not just in terms of a curse he also cost them because that money was saved up for specific bowlers which anil kumble could not buy